Yeah. Now that we know the difference between the banking book and a trading book, it would be a good idea to talk about a revised boundary, which FRTB is proposing uh, in order to bifurcate positions between a banking book and a trading book. So the main idea, as we discussed a couple of slides back, for defining this revised boundary is to prevent the banks from taking undue advantage of moving assets between or switching assets between trading book and the banking book uh, from the point of view of earning regulatory arbitrage. So FRTB comes down very, very hard on this idea of preventing regulatory arbitrage. So that way it is going to prevent the incentive for banks to move between these two books. Now, banks historically have always tried to leverage on this regulatory arbitrage idea because if you're if they're able to find a regulatory arbitrage opportunity they would definitely want to go for it because that is going to free up capital for them isn't it so that's what happens whenever a bank targets regulatory arbitrage now frtb would be very very stringent on those conditions from the point of view of preventing such arbitrage so let's see what the frtb guideline is proposing so the first thing to which they it's proposing is a new boundary to be defined. So there should be a clear indication of which instruments can or cannot be included in the trading book. So we are going to see that list as well. So that way those clear points are defined in the FRTP guideline so that there's no confusion as to how you can decide which instrument goes where. Also ability of banks to liquidate these instruments and determine their value reliably on a daily basis. This is equ equally important because then this talks about uh, how easy it would be for a bank to liquidate a certain position because whenever the bank, let's say the bank wants to offload a certain position, then naturally it has to approach the market. If the market is illiquid, then figuring out what is the true value at which it can be transacted becomes difficult. So this new boundary will also talk about this idea. Now, new strict limits on movement of positions between these two books. So here there will be supervisory guidance for any kind of deviations from, from the given FRTP guideline in designating a certain instrument either as a trading book or a banking book product. So here the supervisory oversight is going to increase so that they so, so that the banking supervisor will have a clear view on any kind of such deviations which may happen. Now, if a regulator observes, now we know that regulator does periodic inspection for banks, right? So even from an, from the Indian banking markets perspective, which is primarily my uh, my area where I have my experience as well, professional experience. So in India as well, uh, two popular ways in which the Reserve Bank of India, which is the banking regulator for India, uh, the way in which they conduct uh, inspection for banks, uh, one is through something which they call as an on-site supervision. So an on-site supervision, as the name goes, we have the uh, RBI officials which are on banks campus trying to understand the processes and procedures which bank follows for doing their day-to-day -day business. And another thing which the regulator does, uh, and that is something which is done every three months or every quarter. So that is what we call as the idea of RBS or risk-based supervision. So another important idea which allows the regulator to exercise these kind of regulatory oversights. Now. In case a regulator during its review of a certain bank observes that certain instruments are improperly designated, that is, let's say that a product should act or that instrument should ideally have been in the banking book, but maybe it has gone to the trading book or vice versa, then they have the full authority to instruct a bank to initiate a change between these books uh, as, as, de as it deems fit. And regulatory capital loopholes, if any, are to be filled such that that will reduce the or that will eliminate the incentive for banks to move instruments between these two books. So one is capital disincentives are imposed, which will primarily discourage banks from switching between books. So just to understand what these disincentives are. So let's say the bank has done a kind of a switching of a certain instrument. So let's say an instrument was falling in one book, let's say the trading book and the bank wants to now move it to, let's say the banking book. Now, uh, if because of such kind of a movement, the amount of capital requirement has come down, then what the guideline will say is any difference in capital charge measured at a time of point of point of this switching between the banking and the trading book, 
this will be imposed on that particular bank as a fixed additional tier one capital charge and this is the main uh, or this is one of the main ways in which banks will uh, will try not to do these kind of switchings